live with you guys because I believe it's just such a important chapter and lesson in life and it's good for us to look at it and understand it from the Torah's perspective and what does Judaism teach us about it and how can we better learn and understand and relate to it. So as I said, the discussion is, what is the difference between be fruitful and multiply versus intimacy? So being fruitful and multiply was discussed in chapter one in Genesis when God created the world and the humans, the animals, the mammals, and everything that he created. This concept of being fruitful and multiply was given to all the beings that were created to procreate and have children. And this is just an um, animalistic ability that any animal, any human is capable of having, which is the relationship that re leads to procreation. So there isn't much thoughts to it. There isn't much understanding, you know, even animals that are born when they reach a certain age, they're capable of procreating so this isn't anything that's scientific or like knowledge or, or takes knowledge or any information it's just an ability that God has given to its creatures to be able to bring more of its kind into the world whenever he permits it to happen so what's the difference of that and intimacy so that's the interesting part the only being that God gives the ability to be able to communicate and has given them the soul and has given them a, the ability to use their five senses and be able to connect in a different format besides the procreation is the human being. So the human being is the only being that has that ability to be able to form a relationship, to be able to form a connection, a form of understanding, to be able to connect with another human being on a multi-sensory level of being able to relate and empathize and understand and be able to create uh, serotonin and dopamine through even conversation of empathy and love and understanding and compassion and being able to relate and having the ability to provide emotions for one another and you know to cry when they're having certain feelings and having another person hear them seeing this experience of the sadness being affected differently in the brain only humans are capable of doing such a thing for one another so what does the word intimacy is referred to in the Torah? You know, like I always wonder, like, what does the Torah call it? You know, how does the Torah relate to it? So it's interesting to know that the Torah refers to the word intimacy, which is a whole complete other level of connection that takes place between humans versus animals, is the concept of yidia, knowledge, knowledge through communication. The word yidia is what's referred to as intimacy. It's the um, euphemism of yidia is intimacy, according to the Torah. At a deep level, speech represents a connection between the higher and the lower part of the world. So as human beings, we come into this world to magnify and take everything and transform it and elevate it in another level of existence. So we take what's mundane and earthly and we create a spiritual essence to what is mundane and is done for, for everyone. We take it and put it on another level. So what does that mean? That the Torah teaches us about discipline. It teaches us, teaches us about the unification of the body and the soul on another level of existence that is just more than a physical connection. It's the unification that takes place spiritually, intellectually, physically, emotionally it's like stimulating all the senses on a level that hasn't been been able to be felt on another level it's this experience that takes place with two human beings that come together and they their union 
elevates them to that sense of oneness. It's like bringing the two and creating that oneness. This oneness of yediya, of knowledge and understanding, only takes place with human beings. Humans are the only species that have the ability to connect on that level. However, not all humans are able to. It's another not euphoric state of being that takes emotional and social and spiritual development to get to that. So what that's teaching us is any human can have the, the possibility of procreation, of that act to procreate and bring more, more humans into the world. But to be able to connect on that other multi-sensory connection, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, through empathy, through understanding, it takes another level of existence. To be able to truly connect on that level takes a lot more willpower discipline and determination to tap into that energy it's not something that just comes to you easily it's something that takes effort that takes patience that takes understanding it's about the journey it's not about the end result it's about the usness and not the i it's about the union and not just about the pleasure of the self that is the only way that you're able to connect to that intimacy of the yediya. The connection of the Puruvu, anyone can do it. Like I said, it exists in the animal world. It exists everywhere. Anyone can do the act of procreation. The act of a male and a female coming together to procreate is the option and a possibility that any human, animal, mammal is capable of doing but to connect on that intimate level that the Torah teaches us about Yediya, to understand that depthness of that usness, that takes another whole level. That takes emo emotional development, that takes self discipline, it takes understanding, empathy, compassion. It's another level of being. So we go, we sit and we think about it. So how does the Torah teach us to do that? How does the Torah teach us to have that self-discipline? And uh, a good friend of ours, Naama and Hanan, um, he was her husband. We were having this Torah discussion and he was mentioning, and I was like discussing it with my husband, that how the Rambam teaches us that anytime you come into a contact with a person, you got to make sure that they have a balance in three areas of their life. These three areas are, first, their eating habits. You know, like, do they have a balance? Do they overeat or undereat? Do they eat for the sustenance to be able to perform and do their daily task? And what is their relationship with food? Next. What is their relationship with the drive? What kind of drives, motivation do they have? Do they have a healthy balance with why are they working? Or are they in, do they feel unproductive and they just lie on the couch all the time? Do they have a drive? And what is that drive like? What is that drive in them like? Are they obsessively just working without stopping, without having a, Balance of taking a break, spending time with family, spending time with their loved one and friends, or are they hopeless and they barely move off the couch and have no drive? What is their connection and their drive? Do they have a healthy balance? And the third one is, what is their connection and their balance with intimacy and sexuality? Do they have a drive or do they have no drive? Where are they on the spectrum? Because you need to have the drive, but it should not take over you. And that's where we learn about the sexual addiction or lack of libido. Both extreme, both extreme are not healthy. It's about having the balance in between. So what's the balance? How do you have a balance? What do we learn about that? The laws of family purity, the laws of taharat hamishpacha, the laws of the mikveh. The laws of the mikveh teaches the husband and wife that two weeks out of the time, 
from the time the woman menstruates and gets her period, the, the sense of touch is removed. So the romantic, sexual, physical touch is removed. And now you have to keep that connection between you through the other four senses. The, the sense of sight, you know, being present, being available, reading together, stimulating your relationship through other senses besides the sexual contact. So you have the sense of seeing, the, what about the odd, you know, the hearing, listening to each other, listening to a shi'ur, having a connection <laughs> through the ability of connecting through that. And then you have the sense of smell, you know, cooking a food together. You know, you're able to utilize that and eating, you're able to Make a meal together. Just no intimacy. Just no physical contact. Make sure to nurture that part of that relationship because the majority of women thrive by having that connection with their husband. Thrive by knowing that they are connected even though they cannot be sexually intimate. That they have that communication, that conversation. Not every man is emotionally developed to be able to provide that for his wife. It takes a lot of willpower. It takes a lot of psychological, emotional development to be able to provide that for the spouse. Women thrive from that, that communication, the emotionally being present, being able to verbalize, communicate, being able to be there with their spouse, and emotional support is something that's very, very valuable for a woman. And then when she goes to the mikveh, that physical intimacy is added, which is men and women by nature are more emotional, more in tuned, more, um, they have that sense of privacy and internal, internalness, and they want to be heard and understood. They want to be cared for. They want to have that compassion. That's how God has built them. They ruminate, you know, like whatever comes, and that's how they're able to hold on to a pregnancy for nine months, you know. They're able to take in and hold on. They have the bina. They have that bina yatera. They have that lightness of, you know, the bina, but they hold on to things. They need the compassion. They need the empathy. They need to know that you're there. You understand them. You hear them. You ask them, how was your day? How are you doing? That empathy is what makes the woman have that desire of the connectivity with the husband. But that part of her relationship needs to be nurtured so that the two weeks where she's tahora that she's physically able to be with her husband, she's able to be there. So she needs that emotional connectivity to be there physically with her husband. It's kind of like this beautiful dance of going and coming and how the Torah emphasizes that to us, that that is a significant part of a relationship between a man and a woman, that the Torah talks about it, the Ketubah talks about it. And when he signs the Ketubah, he says, I'm going to provide for her food, shelter, and onata, her onata, her pleasure, her satisfaction, her connectivity to her. The Torah has the husband obligated to sign it. And there's nine ways that he's not permitted to be with her, which we'll cover on another video, God willing. So the fit, the man is more of an external, that physical connectivity comes to him easier. And the woman is more of the emotional connectivity. And the Torah says that in order for a husband and wife to have a healthy relationship, both areas has to be nurtured and taken care of for them to have a beautiful elevation and a healthy relationship. Both sides has to be nurtured. And that's what the Torah teaches us. What makes humans different than animals is that we have that ability to connect, delay everything else, and connect fully, not just physically, on a spiritual, emotional, intellectual level. That's a gift that God has given only humans and not animals. Thank you so much for listening. This is Natalie Zangon. My email is nataliezangon at gmail.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to share it.